okay, the new server is up and running. If you all send me your SSH keys, I can add them. You know who is also finishing their master soon? Hmm? Um, uh, Jonas. Jonas. No, no, not Jonas. <laughs> yes? Uh, nothing. Uh, Lucas just... Uh... All right, so this episode is about load value injection, LVI. Yeah. And with this attack, you can basically leak all the host's memory um, on the system. And in principle, yeah, this should already be mitigated by mm -hmm. now. Uh, for it. It's still a super interesting paper uh, by uh, Kocha. Kocha. No, no, it was not Kocha. It was uh, Van Van Bulk. <laughs> <Got our>, <laughs> um, yeah, foreshadow. Oh yeah, yeah. But is it really mitigated? Just by making sure things are not loaded into the L1. Oh. Yeah. What if an attacker would be able to do that? Too easy. To load it into the L1. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Um, and, and that's what we show in our speculative dereferencing paper. There are gadgets, specter gadgets in the kernel or in the hypervisor that dereference user space registers. And this allows us to perform foreshadow. Yeah, because only the parts of the L1 are flushed that, that are um, knowingly accessed. But those speculatively accessed locations, they are not flushed in those optimized versions of the patches. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that revives foreshadow. Exactly. But what if the hardware falls for the same trick as Daniel? What? What trick? What is his girlfriend's name? Um, Cha Charlene. Charlene. Charlotte. <laughs> it was just because Lucas injected it right into your mind. Uh, you mean like in this movie here, Inception, where they inject ideas into people's minds? Oh, that could really work. Here we have foreshadow. Yeah. yeah. And what happens is that the attacker dereferences an invalid address. Leaking the secret value. Yeah, but leakage, think of branch prediction. Yeah, yeah branch prediction. We had branch prediction side channels, and we had um, also Spectre. Right, and in Spectre, we basically injected wrong branch predictions into the victim. Okay, so you mean we sort of turned the leakage around? Right, so now if you take any of those uh, meltdown variants, like foreshadow, zombie load, uh, riddle, fallout, yeah, yeah, but they don't have anything to do with branch prediction. Uh, they leak data values. But if you take a look at it, we have metadata leakage yeah. and metadata injection. Ah, yeah. We have data leakage. Data leakage, yeah. And this last square. So we produced this teaser for the LVI paper, and there Jo van Burg is explaining these four squares. Uh, wait, check this out. It's called load value injection. I think we overlooked one square. And this last square, that's LVI. So by using a load instruction, you want to turn that data leakage around. Yeah, and inject incorrect data values into the victim. So the victim performs a load. We inject the value. We could call that load value injection, LVI. That sounds cool. And, and that's the name that Jo van Burg came up with when he discovered this attack. Okay, so you fill the microarchitecture, some microarchitectural buffer with some value. Yeah. And then? So the victim performs a faulty load or a microcode-assisted load to produce some meltdown effect. And then the victim's operation, the load operation, picks up that value. But what does the victim do with this injected data? Think of what happens in Spectre, where you injected metadata. 
Yeah, yeah, but for Spectre, we had gadgets like this one with a branch and then some array accesses. And those gadgets, they would leak the data from the victim to the attacker. And same as for Spectre, there must be some LVI gadgets which use the injected data to access some other memory location. Okay, so LVI gadgets, you mean gadgets that would be transiently executed and possibly something that the victim normally wouldn't execute. Exactly. And then, of course, at some point, the CPU will clean up the mess and finish the fault or microcode assist. Okay. Wait, microcode assist? Or even more, a fault? Why, why would the victim get a fault? Hmm. May I jump in there? Ah. Hi. You could attack SGX. SGX? You can unmap pages for SGX, right? Right, that was part of control channel attacks. Yeah, I remember. Exactly, because in the SGX threat model, you may be... The operating system. Yeah, so you can unmap pages. Wait, you can unmap pages. You unmap the page. That means the enclave gets a fault on a load, and that means it transiently continues working with that injected load value? Yes. Ah. Imagine a gadget like this. Uh -huh. The enclave basically picks up our injected value and dereferences it. So we can inject an arbitrary address here and load a secret value from there. Hmm. And then we use the secret value to access an array with a known 4096 byte offset trick to avoid the prefetcher. Mm -hmm. So that means you can leak arbitrary data from enclaves? Exactly. Well, only, only if you have that gadget there, right? Yeah. Only with this gadget. No, I think it could also be another gadget. Think of Spectra. You had tons of different gadgets there. Probably we don't even know all of them yet. Mm -hmm. I'll try that. Sounds cool. Yeah. See? It leaks. Ah, but there were also real-world gadgets um, that we presented in the LBI paper. Um, this one here, for instance, this one is from the SGX SDK. So if you provide an address to this MOF here that actually is a user space memory location with a fake stack setup, mm -hmm. and then the return instruction down there can pick up the wrong address from the store buffer, so that's like uh, transient to return oriented programming. Right? Yeah. Uh, I have another one. Uh, check this one out. Uh, so somewhere up there, there's a store to a user address. Ah, and the user address is controlled by the attacker. Yeah. And then down there, the load from the stack uh, might obtain a wrong value. Again, from the store buffer. I had some more ideas. Uh-huh. Oh. So? How do you mitigate this? Huh? Even, even return instructions are bad, right? You can't even use return instructions or call instructions because they dereference the memory location and then do something with it. So you could mitigate it in software by replacing simple constructions such as uh, red jump call with more complex constructions where no memory location is dereferenced and used in the same instruction. Yeah. And elephants is placed in between uh, the dereference and the critical use. Isn't that super slow? Oh yeah. Well, someone would have to measure it. Search for that here. Uh, load value injection performance. Oh wow, look at this. Two to 19 times slower. Wait. Where does this data come from? Load value injection, um, lviattack.eu. They have a website for that. Look, there's even three plots. This is the overhead observed with the mitigation implemented by the LVI paper authors. And this one is Intel's mitigation in GCC and Clang. Here also on another set of benchmark tests. But, so we, we, wait a second. This is not just known already, but also mitigated already? 
Yeah, even in hardware. Some newer Intel processors just forward zeros to faulting loads. Some even stall. So in the LVI paper, we consider LVI gadgets in terms of three phases. Uh, P1, poisoning. P2, provoking injection. And P3, passing the data to the attacker. In the paper, it says transmitting for P3. But passing fits better. Poisoning, provoking, passing. So with this, you can also revive Foreshadow on SGX. Let's say you remap the stack, the enclave stack, to some user page. This will cause a fault. Um, and then uh, before you start you um, with, with P1, poisoning, um, you start with a gadget that loads an attacker-controlled value into the L1. And then a gadget for P2, provoking injection, yeah. which pops the return address from the stack, but then falls and picks up the poisoned attacker-controlled value transiently from L1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that means uh, that the control returns to an attacker-chosen address with in the enclave. Just like in a rock attack. And for P3, transmission at the attacker chosen location, there will be a gadget to transmit the data to the user space. Yeah. Let's go through these steps in more detail in a concrete proof of concept LVI attack. In this attack, we set up a fake stack which contains multiple fake return addresses, exactly like in a return-oriented programming attack. However, this stack will not architecturally be used by the victim, and these gadgets here will also not be architecturally executed by the victim. Instead, the attacker performs stores such that with incorrect store-to-load forwarding, an incorrect stack pointer, pointing to our fake stack, is loaded by the victim. When the victim now tries to access the stack, it runs into a similar situation as in the meltdown type attack fallout. The processor now transiently uses the fake stack and executes the attacker chosen gadget chain. You can see that the first gadget places a secret nullix 4 f which is the ASCII letter O, in RAX. The second gadget shifts the value such that it can be used as a 4 kilobyte offset in an array. The last gadget encodes the secret into the cache. Of course, this is all transient and the changes will be reverted still as the last part of the gadget chain leaked the secret value into the cache. The attacker can still retrieve it and recover the secret which we see printed here every single time it is leaked. Changing the secret to nullix50, we should now be leaking the value p. And indeed, we are now leaking the value p, showing that our attack works. What about the zero values? The zeros? Leaking zeros maybe is fine, but injecting zeros is, is bad, just the same. But then what happens? I mean, uh, the enclave tries to access the stack or something at address null. <laughs> Exactly. And gets it installed on null. Yeah, but the attack could map something there. Oh, and, and then you place a fake stack there with return addresses, code locations of whatever gadget you would like to run. Oh, yes. And then leak with those gadgets, yeah. Maybe even stitch together like in a rob attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In this second proof of concept, we use LVI null and target an SGX enclave. This time, we do not focus on executing code inside the enclave by manipulating stack or pointers used during transient execution. This time, we attack an AES-NI encryption. The attacker has kernel privileges and can simply remove the access permissions to the page containing the AES round key while the SGX enclave is still using it. When the victim tries to access the round key, 
it will transiently pick up a wrong value. This could be a value injected as we did before or especially on CPUs which transiently only forward zero, a zero value. Now the victim, in our case, uses a zero value instead of the actual round key. This is a similar situation as in the last episode where we then recovered the key from faulty ciphertexts using differential fault analysis. Okay, in a ninth round then. Then the error would propagate through the last round. The key would be used to do this S-box look up here and uh, that means so you could take the difference of the ciphertexts and compute backwards through the last round and get a bunch of key candidates. Mm -hmm. We use the same trick here and with that leak the full AES key simply by injecting seemingly innocuous zero values. But how, how do you mitigate these LVI and null attacks then? It's complicated. Maybe we can just give them a very brief idea of uh, what could be done. I mean, first of all, processes could simply stall. Yeah. And modern processes do that. Because for transiently forwarding zero is still a huge problem. And if it doesn't stall, then we would need to mitigate this in software. And that's pretty ugly. There are a bunch of different LVA null gadgets, like uh, direct jumps, indirect jumps, transient stacks, branches, direct loads, indirect loads. Yeah. Maybe I think we should mention this idea to mitigate uh, these attacks with segmentation. Uh, segmentation is applied before the translation from virtual to physical. Um, so you can create a segment such that the address null relative to that segment actually points into the enclave and is not attacker controlled anymore. And then you change all the pointers in the enclave uh, so that they are relative to that segment. As easy as that. Ah, and then when you inject null, the enclave is reading from that address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really easy. Yeah. yeah, it sounds easy. But actually implementing that in a compiler to work in SGX, that's a lot of work. But it works. Yeah, and also the overhead of our mitigation is quite low. We only have like an overhead of 10%. In contrast to the existing LVI mitigations, which have like um, 19 factor 19 times overhead. Yeah, maybe that's something to keep in mind. So mitigations against side channels and transit execution attacks can be very expensive. Mm -hmm.